Thank you everyone for joining us for our uh, third installation of our A to J Author Summer Webinar Series. I am Jessica Frank with A to J Author and uh, with me today I have Allison Ludley from Community Legal Education of Ontario, CLEO, and Allison is going to tell you all about how they are using A to J Author as part of their Guided Pathways program in Canada. They have been a user of A to J Author for many years. They host themselves. They do a lot of different tech with it. They've improved some of our code. They've worked with us for improvements into our software. And so Alice is going to walk you all through it. So I am going to uh, stop sharing. Allison, you can take over now. And at the end, we'll come back for time for questions. If you have any for her, our contact information will be at the end. But um, Allison, take it over. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jessica. So thank you again for letting me speak today about Clio's Guided Pathways program. My name is Allison Ledley. I am the manager of the Guided Pathways program here at Community Legal Education Ontario, or Clio. I am not a lawyer, but I have been working with Clio's Guided Pathway team since 2017. So I'm going to begin my presentation today by providing an overview of Clio and the Guided Pathways, discussing the notable feature of the Pathways and the A to J functionality that we utilize, how to access Clio Guided Pathways, and the Guided Pathways that we have available. I will then be walking you through two of Clio's newer Family Law Guided Pathways to show, we, to show you how we at Clio use A to J Author to break down complicated legal processes. So after the demo, we will be discussing the four principles our guided pathways are built upon, how we connect people with the guided pathways, and the pathways that we have in development. For those of you who don't know Clio, since 1974, Clio has developed clear, accurate, and practical legal education and information to help people understand and exercise their legal rights. Our work focuses on providing information to people who face barriers to accessing the justice system due to income, disability, literacy, and language. Legal Aid Ontario is our core funder. So our work at Clio includes the Guided Pathways, which are online interactive interviews built using A to J Author that help people in Ontario complete legal forms and create legal documents. Clio's Guided Pathways are decision trees comprised of simple questions. The A to J Author avatar guides the user through the decision trees using the answer to each question. Information collected along the way still is used to fill out um, necessary legal documents and present public legal information. So following the decision tree, the pathway takes people through a logical series of plainly stated questions one at a time. This one question at a time approach serves to break difficult concepts into smaller pieces, and people only see a question if it applies to their specific situation. People often require help understanding the implication of their answers. We integrate easy to understand legal information into the questions. So in each question, we aim to present legal information that is relevant to the situation. The guided pathways also help organize people's information for their forms using logic rules. These rules can also verify some information for internal consistency and formatting. Another way that the tool helps is to streamlining data entry Information used on forms is only entered once and then filled into multiple forms. The pathways are equipped with a number of different features that enhance their accessibility, as well as, their, as well as the comprehensibility of legal information. So just want to take a moment and cover some of the features of A to J Author uh, that we here at Clio like to use. Of course, to learn more, where we include public legal information relevant to the question being asked, and the pop-up feature to provide plain language definitions of unfamiliar terms. We also use this feature to display relevant information that a user had selected or entered earlier in the pathway so that the user can be remind so that the user <clears throat> can be reminded about this information as they need it. We use the hyperlink feature to direct the user to helpful website and resources. Uh, so for example, information on how to get legal advice or the address and contact information for their local courthouse. Users are also able to save information that is important to them in a personalized checklist. At the end of the pathway, the user can download and save or print their checklist. So this downloaded, uh, this downloaded document, the checklist, contains clear and concise legal information on every topic that the user has opted to add to their, to their checklist through the duration of the interview. 
The progress tra tracker also makes it easy for the user to keep track of the information that they have ent entered throughout their interview. So an important feature of the pathway is the save and exit function, which allows users to save their information and exit the pathway at any time. Users' information is stored in our secure system, hosted at Legal Aid Ontario. However, um, because work must be saved locally, users must be logged into their account to use this function, and anonymous users or guest users cannot save information in the system. Depending on the situation, the pathways will also prompt users to complete additional forms, like for example, financial statements. And we often do this using follow-up pathways, which we use any data already entered. Users can enter their email address to receive a reminder and a link to complete these additional forms. Once completed, the pathways output relevant court forms, which are populated using the user's answers. Most guided pathways will output all of the forms necessary for a particular step or process. And once downloaded, uh, the forms can then be edited in Word or Adobe Reader. Our pathways also provide people with the next steps checklist um, that is tailored to their situation. And we also provide detailed instructions, uh, for example, how to file uh, your court forms. So the guided pathways are accessible from Clio Steps to Justice website. For those that are unfamiliar with this website, Steps to Justice provides people with legal information to properly exercise their legal rights. So led by Clio, Steps to Justice is a collaborative project of Ontario justice sector organizations, and this includes uh, Legal Aid Ontario. So from the Steps to Justice website, you can click on the Guided Pathways drop-down menu and find the area of law that you need help with. So this brings you to the page of available guided pathways for that particular area of law. Alternatively, uh, you can scroll down the Steps to Justice homepage until you see this. However, most people access the guided pathways from Ontario Court Services Family Law Rules webpage. Uh, so this webpage is the Ministry of the Attorney General's Court Services website, and this is where people go to get their uh, family law court forms. So from ontariocourtforms.ca, people are linked to our guided pathways homepage. And again, here the user selects the area of law that they need help with. So in this particular instance, the user has selected that they need help with family law, which takes the user to another page where they can browse their collections of available court form tools for that area of law, including the pathways themselves. The user selects the pathway that applies to their situation. And after selecting their desired pathway, the user is brought to a start page. And this page summarizes who should and should not use the pathway and outlines what information is necessary. So most of the guided pathways we have available to the public are in family law. To date, uh, we have 18 collections of guided pathways in family law. This includes pathways for exploring dispute resolution processes and financial planning after separation. There's a pathways for simple or joint divorce. And this tool was actually our first direct to public of our direct to public legal tools. Um, and this pathway, simple and joint divorce, is our most used of our guided pathways. We also have pathways for applications regarding children, support, and property in separation and divorce, as well as filing a support agreement for enforce enforcement, <clears throat> pardon me, answering a family law application, as well as replying to an answer and case and settlement conferences. Additionally, we have pathways for making or responding to a motion and completing net family property forms. We also have pathways for making and responding to a motion to change, as well as pathways for making a motion to change on consent. Additionally, there are pathways for a trial management conference, drafting an order, and requesting a court fee waiver. However, we also offer guided pathways to help people experiencing abuse and violence, as well as pathways for housing law, immigration law, income assistance, small claims court, and wills and power of attorney. We do also offer guided pathways to assist not-for-profits with drafting bylaws as well. So in total, Clio offers 39 English guided pathway collections in eight areas of law. So this totals 103 individual guided pathways. Currently, we offer 35 French guided pathway collections in seven areas of law, totaling 73 individual guided pathways. So regardless of which pathway the user has opted to use, 
When people launch the Guided Pathways from Steps to Justice, they are first prompted to log in or create an account. If people create an account, this allows them to save partially completed interviews, um, as well as save their forms or come back and complete follow-up interviews as their case progresses. Either way, people first agree to the terms of use. And if it's your first time using the Guided Pathway system, you will be asked to fill out an optional survey to help us understand who we are helping with the pathways. And this is actually part two of that optional demographic survey. Once the survey is complete, the pathway begins. As stated earlier, I'd like to walk you through some of our newer guided pathways to show you how we at Clio are using A to J and its functionality to break down complicated legal processes. I'm going to be starting with the Form 15 guided pathway for requesting a motion to change. So this pathway is um, for requesting a change in a family law matter. It is for individuals who want to request a motion to change the terms of a final order or support agreement, and the other party does not agree with the changes. Individuals can ask to make changes to various family law matters, for example, child support, spousal support, decision-making responsibility, what used to be called custody, as well as parenting time, or what used to be called <clears throat> access. So the pathway begins with instructions and information that ensure the user is in the right place. The pathway also informs the user of documents and information they will need to complete the pathway. So in the interest of time, we are going to jump around a little bit. We're going to skip some of the introductory information, which is where the user would enter information about themselves and the other party. And we are going to jump to the section of the pathway where the user enters information about their relationship. So this section collects information about the user's relationship with the other party, including information about their marriage, separation, uh, any children that they have financially supported. The questions begin by asking the user about the status of their relationship with the other party. And here, the user enters that they were married. They are then prompted to enter the date of their marriage and the date that they separated. Next, the user is asked if they have any children with the other party. So in this case, the user here says yes. So as previously mentioned, throughout the pathways, we utilize A to J system functionality like pop-ups, and we use this to offer relevant just-in-time information. So on this page, if the user clicks on child support, they will see a plain language definition of the term. In the same way, if the user clicks on form A to application, they can read information about this form. And similarly, by clicking on learn more, the user is, pre is uh, presented with information that can help them answer the question. So here, there is information about which children the user should include. So here our user enters that they would like to list one child. They are then prompted to enter information about their child. The user is asked about where the child lives and who they live with. Uh, in this case, the user enters that the child lives with their mother. And here you can see how the interview can recall relevant information that a user has already entered. Um, and a significant benefit of A to J author is that information um, only has to be entered once here. At the end of the section, the user is asked about whether they are asking for a change in child support for their child. Our user is interested in changing the amount of child support and therefore selects yes. And again, learn mores are embedded throughout the pathway to provide helpful information. And this learn more, importantly, helps the user determine whether they would like to change child support for their child. So the next section of the pathway inquires about the user's family law case. This section asks the user to provide information about their case, including their role in the case, and what they're asking the court to change. So here, the user selects that they are the applicant. And next, the users are asked to select the types of orders they want to change. The user can select more than one order if they wish. Again, pop-up definitions explain the different types of order and support agreements. After reviewing the content, the user selects what they want, to court, what they want the court to change. So in this case, they select final order. The user is then asked about the kind of final court orders they want amended then we use pop-ups to help explain what these orders are. Pop-up definitions explain each order. They contain the links to the relevant external resources. Um, in this instance, they contain a link to the child support guidelines. 
the user selects child support table amount as the kind of order that they would like the court to change. The next selection, uh, the next section in this pathway collects information um, about the orders that are to be changed. The user is asked about the specific terms in the order they would like the court to change. And here, the user is presented with two text boxes. So in the first box, the user enters the text word for word from the final order that they want changed. In the second box, they can enter the new text of the order they want to court, they want uh, <clears throat> the court to make instead. And a great feature of this is that the size of the text box is adjust. So this allows the user to enter as much information that is needed for their situation. And again, learn more is provide information to help the user answer the question. This learn more in particular explains how the user can list the terms they want amended, as well as their desired new terms, and we provide helpful examples. The user enters the term from the final order they want changed. And here, our user notes the child support terms they want changed and what they want the order to be. Next, the user is asked to provide more information about why they want the terms of the order changed. In this instance, the user explains that the other party's income has increased. So the next section in the pathway gathers more information about support. Since the user has asked for changes to a support order or agreement, the user is notified that they will actually need to enter in more information about this. The section begins by asking the user if they are the payer or the recipient of the support. Here, our user selects that they are actually the one receiving support. The user is then prompted to enter information about the payer's income from the past three years. The user inputs this information, entering the amount from three years ago, two years ago, and one year ago. So finally, the user is asked about any outstanding child or spousal support under the current order or agreement and why they want the desired changes. And sorry, pardon me, when they want the, the when they want their desired changes to the child support to start. The final section of this pathway is about the court process. It includes information uh, for the user about additional forms that they may need to complete, as well as the duties they must agree to when requesting a motion to change. So here, the user is informed of the additional forms, specifically financial forms, that they need to fill out based on their situation. Again, users have the option to receive help filling out these forms. So here, our, uh, our user has selected yes, that they would like to receive a link uh, for help filling out these financial forms. Next, the user is prompted to confirm that they are aware of their duties set out by the court when making a motion to change. And finally, the user is, is uh, prompted to provide feedback about the guided pathway itself, including what part was most helpful, what part was most difficult, and anything else that they may want to tell us about their experience. And again, these text boxes expand so that the user can enter in as much information as they need. Once the user ends the interview, they are directed to their dashboard where they can download their completed forms and an instruction document outlining next steps. A user can download some or all of the output documents directly to their computer. So we have the required court forms produced by the pathway here. And as mentioned, the pathway also outputs instructions for bringing a motion to change in a family law court case. Uh, so this pathway also provides a partially completed form that the user will need to complete after the forms are served on the other party. So our second pathway that I'd like to walk through today is the guided pathways for requesting a motion to change on consent. So this pathway is for people who want to request a motion to change in a, in a family law case, and, they, and the party agrees to the terms of these changes. So this is used to change the terms of a final order or support agreement. So again, um, in the interest of time, we're going to skip ahead uh, to the section where we collect information about the case. So this section collects information about the changes made to their support order, to their support agreement or court orders. And the user is actually prompted to select the type of court order or agreement that they are asking the court to change. Pop-up definitions helpfully explain the different types of orders and agreements. And here our user selects agreement about support because they would like to make changes to an agreement that includes both child support and spousal support. The user is thus able to select both child and spousal support orders as the orders that they would like to change. So the next section is about child support and the changes uh, to child support that the user wishes to make. 
So the user would like to end child support for their child in this scenario. And so they select yes here. The user then enters information about the child they want to end support for. And the user is then asked to enter to enter the date of the child support order and the date that they want the child support to end. So once again, you can see here how the interview can recall and display relevant information that a user has already entered. The next section is about spousal support and the changes that the user would like to make to their spousal support order or agreement. So here, the user enters no to ending spousal support because they are interested in changing the amount of spousal support. The user selects which party is the payer of the support, and they then enter the new monthly spousal support amount that both parties have agreed on. The user is able to input any outstanding spousal support, and in this case, they select that spousal support is owed to the applicant or the respondent. So here, they select the name of the party that the outstanding spousal support is owed to, and the user is able to enter the amount and date of the outstanding spousal support. It can also enter in the monthly amount and start date agreed upon by the parties to pay the outstanding spousal support. So skipping ahead, the final section in the pathway is the court process. This includes additional information about forms that the user may need to complete. So the pathway lets the user know that um, to file the forms produced by the system, they will need to complete an additional court form. So here the user enters that they would like help filling out this form. So you can see here how the pathway adjusts to guide the user through these additional forms, gathering the information that is required. Um, so specifically, the user is asked information about the laws and the rules that they will be relying on to support their motion. And we do have a pop-up pop definition here that links the user directly to the rules and acts. Users are prompted to enter any materials they will rely on for their motion, and again, with pop-up definitions to help, and how they want their motion to be heard. The user is then informed of an additional form they may need, and they are given the option to get more help. So our user enter here enters that they would uh, like more information and more help in filling out this form. And the user enters the email to receive a reminder and a link to complete this additional form. The user confirms their acknowledgement of their, uh, the user confirms uh, that they acknowledge uh, the duties um, that they have when making a motion to change on consent. And subsequently they finish the pathway. Again, our user is brought to their dashboard, and here they can download their completed forms, their instructions about next steps, and access any follow-up pathways. This pathway uh, can also produce a different uh, motion to change form, um, and this is in cases where the user is only asking to change child support. So <clears throat> more generally here at Clio, we believe that this kind of direct to public automated legal tool uh, shows a tremendous promise for delivering legal information and assistance to the people who need it most. From the outset, we were determined to create tools that work for users um, that were developed from their point of view and that earn the trust of the people who are turning to these types of tools for assistance. So our guided pathways seek to embody four characteristics that we think are essential. This is ease of use, reflectiveness of the diversity of users, robust privacy and uh, security features, as well as sustainability in the long run. So in a sense, Clio is using online interactive technology to reduce the complex of form completion and lessen the public's reliance on experts. So complex uh, or vague terms are replaced with plain, plain language questions, as well as instructions or links to public legal information or plea. We write simple questions to build an intuitively ordered decision tree. The questions are embedded with public legal information that is presented just in time as the user needs it. We use logic to do arithmetic um, and other calculations for the user, generating necessary outputs on the form, again, based on the answers provided by the user to these simple questions. We also reduce the number of sources of information that an individual must locate and look at. Uh, we do this by embedding or linking to external sources and information. Um, for example, lists of courts or tribunal locations, support payment calculators, and so on. And finally, uh, we test and we test and we test. 
Uh, so these efforts <clears throat> represent, though we didn't always think of it uh, in these terms, a functional literacy approach. There are two thoughts I'd like to share here. And, and first, that uh, A to J author is designed for use by people with limited digital literacy. Um, and the user-friendly um, interface of A to J author was developed as a result of usability testing. And secondly, we, we support the multiple entry points that people turn to for help in their communities to ensure that they know about the guided pathways and will refer potential users to them. Uh, people who experience bar barriers relating to literacy and digital access uh, often turn to not-for-profit communities in their local communities that they trust. Our work emphasizes and prioritizes privacy principles throughout the design stage. We host in a public sector data center, Legal Aid Ontario, which is in Canada. Um, as it is recommended practice that for direct-to-public legal tools, especially where sensitive data is being collected, the security of the application uh, should be um, independently verified and ideally in a threat risk assessment or TRA. So in line, here we go. So in line uh, with this recommendation, uh, we did conduct a third party TRA to examine the risk associated with the use of our guided pathways and its associated infrastructure and systems. <laughs> so on to sustainability, uh, regarding uh, content stewardship, so keeping up with changes in the law, uh, content maintenance, uh, we, we draw on our networks. And uh, Clio, as a community legal, edu as a community legal clinic uh, with a public legal education and information mission, is well placed uh, to leverage other content and networks, organizations and outreach uh, to ensure that Clio is a go-to source for plea. Sustainability is also why we use A to J Author, uh, the vibrant community of similar statewide and community organizations using A to J Author across North America. Um, and Cali's institutional support of this tool uh, provides institution support that we think is so critical to content stewardship and knowledge management. And we hope to grow this community in Canada and have in fact begun uh, very early efforts to explore this idea. Um, but in short, a to J author is a reliable and tested tool. It's a great platform for building and sharing decision trees that help people with complex legal forms. So at Clio, we use a variety of tools to assist in connecting people with the guided pathways and minimizing the barriers of entry um, to and use of the guided pathways. This includes referrals. Our hope is to make the guided pathways a go-to referral for people receiving legal assistance and advice, uh, be it you know duty counsel, limited retainers, clinic information centers, and so on. Uh, so what we have heard from advocates, uh, information providers, and mediators is that people sometimes need some background on the guided pathways. So we have created a short video introduction, and you can find this introduction on our Family Law Guided Pathways homepage. Um, and also to provide a virtual takeaway, advocates and uh, information providers can download an e-poster designed for emailing to clients. So this poster lists all the available guided pathways along with the forms that the pathways can fill out. According with Court Services and Legal Aid Ontario, we email bookmarks to Family Law Information Centre uh, service providers across the province of Ontario. Um, for distribution uh, to the public. Um, this was several years ago we did this, um, but these can also be reordered as necessary through the Clio website. And our Guided Pathways collection uh, is continuing to grow. So currently, we are developing two new pathways for small claims court. Uh, this is to aid in defense and counterclaim, as well as bringing a motion. We're developing a new Guided Pathways for people experiencing abuse and violence to fill out the forms they need to apply for a peace bond. And we are developing a new Family Law Guided Pathway to help people fill out the court forms for orders issued on consent. So just to touch very briefly on our evaluation efforts. So some of the early insights uh, from data related to our Form 8 Pathway show that Importantly, that the guided pathways are being used by um, Ontarians of all ages. As well, um, the guided pathways are, are not just being used by people in Toronto, but they're being used by people all across Ontario. 
So regarding an analysis of our user survey, so the user survey responses demonstrate that most users are um, happy with the pathways, functionality, and ease of use. Uh, those responding to the survey expressed satisfaction uh, with the usability um, regarding the question, what part was most difficult? Um, by far, the most common response was sort of some variation on none of it or nothing. Uh, this was similar for um, the question, what part of the pathway was the most helpful? Um, most of it was variations on all of it or everything or the entire pathway. Uh, and a number of anecdotal responses demonstrate the utility of the pathways for its users. So, um, you know, when asked what part was most helpful, some of the responses included, I like the help taps on the side and the highlighted links explaining what terms mean, the way each question is broken down in simple terms without all the legal leads, the bubble to the right that would explain what kind of answers they are looking for, the step the step by step direction and being able to click on highlighted words to see an explanation of a definition slash description. We're also engaging in a number of research partnerships with academic institutions. So our, our goal here is to gain insight and understanding, especially with regards to outcomes. Uh, one of these partnerships included a study that was undertaken to identify and compare the complexities associated with the Family Law Guided Pathways and fillable PDFs. So this study included a talk aloud in which two groups of students uh, with no formal legal training completed a Form 8 form, uh, which is an application uh, for separation or divorce in uh, family law. And this was based on a hypothetical scenario provided by the researchers. So we had one group using the Guided Pathways and one group using the fillable PDF form. Uh, some of the key findings from, from this included, uh, one, that users reported that the pathways use of plain language made them less complex than their fillable PDF counterparts. Um, for example, researchers report that they explain instead of prompting a user to fill in applicant or respondent information, uh, the pathways ask for your information and your partner's information. So participants appeared to very easily understand whose information went into each of these sections, given these plain language of the prompts. Additionally, participants noted that the pathways use of consecutive prompts, as opposed to blank fillable lines, made it clearer which information was needed in each step of the form. Participants also noted uh, that the pathways explanatory aids greatly aided in reducing complexity. Additionally, uh, whereas a fillable PDF form often asks a user just one question, the pathways break apart complex questions into sub-questions, uh, which the researchers found aided in eliciting pertinent information from the users. For example, the users, uh, the researchers note from this study, if a user selects um, that they wish to claim child support, the system will ask a number of sub-questions. Um, these sort of sub-questions do not appear on the fillable PDF form. Uh, in general, the presence of sub-questions led participants using the pathways version to provide more detailed explanation about their claims. So the study results, uh, the study's results point to a number of features unique to the pathways, which serve to reduce complexity. complexity. Uh, so the pathways emit irrelevant information that is to be filled out by a court clerk or other official. Uh, the pathways provide additional legal resources. So this, inclain, this includes explanatory information at the beginning of the pathway. Uh, this also, you know, combined with the pop-ups definitions and links to external resources that contain relevant information, relevant legal information, led to a far smaller amount of reported complex complexity uh, from study participants who had used the pathways. Additionally, by providing information about uh, where to go or who to contact in uh, cases of violence. Um, so this is done in our pathways through resources and screening related to family violence, uh, the creation of a safety plan, information about where to get help. Uh, the pathways uh, provide an important element of protection that is uh, currently missing for self-represented litigants.
The pathways, of course, replacement of legalese terms with more colloquial ones, uh, the researchers noticed also greatly reduced the complexities for users. Uh, so whereas a form may be hard to understand for those without formal legal training, the pathways are specifically designed for use by the general public and uh, responses from the study's participants corroborate this. I see that we're running short on time, so I'm going to be concluding my presentation here. Um, but before I turn things back to Jessica, just a quick note, um, I have included my contact information here for those who may have further questions or feedback after this Zoom call. Thank you, Allison. So um, just like I'm always impressed when I see Cleo's guided pathways with how thorough they are and how detailed they are, like your presentation knocked it out of the ballpark here. So really appreciate how structured it was, how you went through the different parts, and you showed us how you guys are using um, A to J Author and how you're expanding on the offerings that we give. So I, I really appreciate your presentation. And so we have some questions in uh, in the chat. And as uh, you all are thinking about it and digesting Allison's presentation, feel free to put it in the chat or um, let me know and I can unmute you if you want to um, ask the question. I just have a couple for you, Allison. So you talked about having your guided pathways in French and English. So are the offerings completely separate or do you have any guided pathways that are in English and French or is like the target population um, experiencing the, the guided pathways as one or the other? That's a great question. Um, so yes, we we do have um, a, a a bilingual um, program offering, you know, in in Ontario, it's the the aim is to um, provide equal services uh, to minority speaking uh, minority French speakers as um, the same services as the majority English speakers. So we aim for that with the guided pathways, and we're still we're still working on developing our our French um, program. So we we aim for that. I mean, it's impressive having you know 103 in English and 73 yeah. um, in French. That's a huge workload. And so you talked about sustainability and keeping up the content. What does it look like in terms of team structure? So can you talk a little bit about sort of what, what your team looks like? What resources are you using in-house? Are you going out of house for the different components of it? Yeah, so a little bit about our team. So, uh, we are a, a multi, a multidisciplinary team here. So this includes lawyers, uh, design analysts, um, programmers, writers, editors, and testers. And, you know, just to, to, to serve, I, I can't sort of stress the testing enough. We conduct, you know, hundreds and hundreds of manual tests, um, before we go live. You know, we're really aiming to ensure that the pathways are working as they should. Um, and that we're identifying possible um, pain points and areas of confusion, um, but also, you know, ensuring um, efficacy. And um, so we're 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 quite. I'm quite fortunate that I get to work with a really um, brilliant multi multidisciplinary team here to to help with this. On the question, you know, sort of maintaining. I mean, maintain this. I, I will say that it's both, you know, one thing I want to say is it's both um, reactive and proactive. So another important element is uh, to help us stay reactive. We stay connected and develop relationships with the courts, uh, tribunals, and key stakeholders. So we rely on our justice stakeholders to keep us apprised of um, upcoming changes to the law. Uh, we join email and legal listservs. Uh, we intend uh, continuing education and training programs held by organizations of lawyers uh, to help us keep abreast of these changes. Uh, so we really aim to you know, stay um, stay connected uh, with um, and listen to that um, community. So we'll say like, you know, ideally we get all of these changes as they happen. And, you know, ideally we know about these changes before they happen as well. You know, we build in uh, redundancy to have a, a proactive process. So this includes, you know, diarizing any reviews and updates to the pathways. You know, if we see a pathway that hasn't been updated or reviewed in some time, uh, we know you know, okay, it's time to initiate uh, that review. So this is this is where we can call upon as well the expertise of our team. Yeah, I um I like the idea where you're talking about the partnerships and and how you're integrated so strongly with the court system. Mm -hmm. I think that's different than what we're seeing a lot in the U.S. Um, where 
the automation of the forms is sort of separate from the courts unless the courts are doing it. So there's not like this strong partnership that you seem to have. And you mentioned in the beginning of your presentation that most of your for most of your access points are coming through that court's website. And so I think that's a strong yeah. thing that you all can bring to the community and show that you have the strong connection with the court system and um, your other government agencies that you can help feed into the program, but also that content, keeping it fresh and, and abreast of all of the potential changes that are coming as well. Mm -hmm. And it's important to, to emphasize, too, about they're really key in alerting us about where there's a need to develop new tools. Um, so it's about like it's about listening to our justice stakeholders. We have to take into account the cost and feasibility, but you know we're we're responding to our justice um, our justice stakeholders, our community partners. You know, especially if there there's an expression of interest in in partnering uh, on a project. Do you gather feedback from the courts or the the judges in sort of a structured way, or is it just an informal relationship that you have with specific justices? Yeah, so there's there's a there's a number of ways um, that we gather uh, feedback. You know, one way, for example, is we'll through outreach and um, presentation. Um, and I, you know, and again, it's about you know really leveraging that e existing um, content and network and. You know, I should say that we, you know, it's, we also, we also, there's other ways we collect um, feedback as, as well, too. So I talked a little bit about um, system and usage data, um, but we also look at things like Google Analytics, SEO Analytics. Um, we look at, um, I mentioned the end user surveys, but we also, you know, collect um, feedback from end users through our technical support line um, and our chat. So, um, you know, we also have um, feedback coming through other other channels. We put this in dialogue. What are you seeing in terms of usage? Do you um, uh, spike since COVID? More people are online filling it out. It's sort of evened out. It's like roughly how many people do you see using your forms annually? Gosh, I'm I'm sorry, I don't have the usage data right right at my fingertips, and I'm I am sorry about that. Certainly, we saw you know we we can sort of. Um, like anecdotally, and again, because I don't have it at my fingertips, um, I seem to recall there was a time, you know, when, when courts had for family law, when um, seeing that sort of spike post COVID, you know, especially as people's situation changed, um, relationship statuses changed, um, income changes, and that sort of trickles down to, to the family law issues. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm so sorry. I wish I had that data, but I, I can, I don't. No, so sorry to put that. sorry to put you on the spot there. <laughs> no, I think that'll be interesting anecdotal mm -hmm. or potential resource uh, in the future research in the future to look into after the pandemic or during the pandemic. What sort of things people were filing in terms of you know there mm -hmm. were um, I've heard you know a lot of um, estate stuff you know probate and filing wills and that whatever getting that stuff in mm -hmm. order because unfortunately so many you know people pass away yes um yes. but then after lockdown stopped there were a spike in divorce cases because people mm -hmm. spent you know six months with someone that didn't work out for them anymore so I just think that's interesting that form filling can also be an indicator of what's going on in in the world um as a mm -hmm. whole so yeah mm -hmm. I think I've got all the questions that were in the chat here if you all have any others, um, feel free to type them in. I'm going to just toggle quickly to my screen here. And just a reminder that our webinar series, uh, we have one more session in it. Um, we have Scott Emery from the Kentucky Administrative Office of the Court. So Scott's going to talk about how the Kentucky courts are doing something very similar to um, the Clio Guided Pathways. They have their own DIY portal and self-help portal in which they are helping to guide litigants through specific processes and have additional data. So that is next month, September 10th at 11 a.m. Central Time, same Zoom link. I have Allison's contact information on the screen, and I also have mine if you're interested in reaching out to us. Thank you, Allison. Thank you for presenting and sharing the good work that you all are doing um, in Canada. It's great to see that this can, this Obviously, self-represented litigants and access to justice crisis is not a special to America or a United States kind of thing. So it's great to see the interesting and profound ways that you guys are tackling um, this problem.
And uh, thank you all for attending. And um, if you want to share this recording, it'll be available on our YouTube channel soon, which is youtube.com slash Ada J author. But I'll stop there. And uh, thank you, Allison. Thank you so much. Um, it was a pleasure um, to, to share our work. And thank you for such a wonderful tool. All right, great. Well, um, have a great uh, August, everyone. And we'll see you again in September.